Good afternoon, everyone. It's Father Neil. It's Thursday, January 7th, 2021, with a weekly update, and it's kind of hard to uh, focus on anything particular today because of the way that things have un events have been unfolding in our nation in the recent days. But first of all, I do hope that you all had a merry, blessed Christmas and a happy New Year and some good time with your family and friends. And for those of you who traveled, I know that many of our school families and some of our teachers traveled over the holiday, and of course that's why we're having uh, all in-home e-learning for the next two weeks so they can quarantine to try to guarantee the safety of the rest of us. That's certainly important. Uh, the new year started off with something very positive, and that is the uh, deployment of the vaccine for uh, COVID to inoculate the people. Yes, it's getting out slower than we had hoped, but it is coming on along the way, and so there is end in sight. The downside, of course, is that we've seen an increase in the positivity rates throughout the country, uh, probably the post-holiday travel, and hopefully that that's uh, going to be minimal, but we do have to kind of still hunker down and continue to do all of our safe practices and hygiene practices to try to prevent the spread until we can get inoculated and that we can uh, obviously then uh, be a lot more freer to move around in the country and resume more of our normal activities. Meantime, of course, that's on everybody's mind, or certainly on all the news media, is the um, recent election results, both in Georgia, which uh, you know, ties the Senate 50-50, which gives the vice president-elect the um, tie-breaking vote, and some people are happy about that, some people are unhappy about it, but the more serious event was the storming of the Capitol by the far-right extremists, who were clearly not uh, patriots. The cardinal has condemned it. Of course, all people of goodwill have condemned the violence, and so it's very tragic for our country that that would happen. But the upside of it, and there really is an upside, is that most people, including the Congress, have upheld the process and have decried the violence and say that the democratic process is more important than any individual result, which is certainly true. We all abhor violence. Uh, free speech is one thing, and Certainly, uh, Benjamin Franklin said, I'll, I disagree with what you said, but I will defend to death your right to say it. That seems to have gone by the wayside to the far right and the far left and the polarization in the country and the villainization of those who disagree. In fact, what's even more tragic in some ways is that families won't even get together to talk because certain family members disagree with the politics and they've forgotten about family, they've forgotten about unity, forgotten about what it truly means to be a people. So I do want to you know, bless uh, all of you in the new year and pray for continued peace. Certainly want to thank uh, Vice President Pence for being able to reconvene the uh, Congress to uphold the results of the Electoral College, whether you agree or disagree with the, with the result to uphold the process that was duly elected by the nation is far more important than who wins and who loses. After all, there'll be elections in two years, another presidential election in four years, and we all have a right and an obligation to go back to the polls to see how the current policies or the new policies of the incoming administration will suit us in terms of how we vote. Uh, locally, of course, we have to be more concerned about what's happening here in Illinois. Um, since the voting down of the so-called fair tax uh, amendment to the Constitution, clearly the state is looking for other ways to bail out all of the obligations which is going to put further burdens on the taxpayers as well as straining our social services. So how to balance that in terms of justice for those who are needy, but justice for those who are also uh, paying the bills and, and, the, and the citizens, it's going to be very difficult. And so regardless of our politics, we need to continue to keep uh, all of these folks in prayer. Uh, certainly uh, Governor Pritzker and Mayor Lightfoot and all those folks who are going to be guiding our city and our state certainly a president-elect Biden and the incoming Congress as they work to try to hopefully restore unity and work now together for the common good. And maybe this terrible event in Washington yesterday will wake people up to realize that too far right and too far left are not the way to go, that we need to move back toward the center to be people of common good, which is, after all, the Christian value of unity. It's what Jesus prayed for at the Last Supper, um, and that was his high priestly prayer that we all be one as he is one with the Father, and to recognize that we're all children of God. And while we have not lived up to our ideal, ideals as Catholics, as Christians, certainly the nation has not lived up to its ideal about freedom and justice for all. We certainly have a lot of economic and racial and social injustices that need to be righted. 
but the principles are the ones that continue to guide us. Those are the principles that we should all work toward achieving the Catholic moral values of following Jesus in this life to do the best we can to see each other as brothers and sisters and how we can alleviate the suffering and take care of those around us, certainly our immediate families, certainly our, our friends, our neighborhoods, but also a larger picture for the common good. So I continue to offer Mass daily even when the church is not open for the prayer intentions of the day, but also for all of our first responders that our police, our fire, our paramedic people will all be kept safe and all our hospital workers will be kept safe as well and healthy as they work to take care of all of us. And as we look to who might be vaccinated next, obviously we're looking once the most vulnerable people and the healthcare workers are vaccinated, we want to look to people like the grocery store clerks, all those folks that are out there every day, particularly those who have to take public transportation and put themselves at greater risk because they are working for the public, that they all be kept safe and that they perhaps would be ahead of the rest of us in the vaccine. I'm of two minds about it at the moment. Governor Pritzker has just announced that he's going to uh, go against the CDC guidelines and allow anybody over 65 to be vaccinated, not the guideline of 75 after the healthcare workers because of the uh, hard hit areas in the minority served communities. And uh, I think it's a good idea in terms of the, the goal, but the reality is, are they going to uh, you know, vaccinate everybody? And the question would be for someone like me who is 65, should I take it because I'm now in the queue or should I wait for the justice of, of the country, uh, people in greater need? As a Catholic Christian, I believe my duty would be to wait until those who are more in need uh, receive it. But nonetheless, it's another polarizing uh, statement for someone who has talked about following the science and serving the, the common good. So, you know, we have too much to, that divides us and too much that's troubling. And certainly um, our moral teaching of the church has no specific answer on every situation what to do. So that's to be guided by conscience. And so it's a difficult situation. But regardless of any of your politics, any of your personal uh, preferences for who's in or who's out, as Father Scott so frequently says, if somebody's out, then nobody's in. How do we work toward that? How do we try to bring healing and Catholic values, Christian values of justice, of peace, of reconciliation, of the common good? These are all things that Jesus worked for and that we're called as baptized into his faith to do that. So that's a lot that's going on right now. And as again, I'm still trying to sort out my thoughts and feelings and trying to be guided by the church teachings, uh, Jesus' teachings in the scriptures on how best to, to respond to these things myself. So I know all of you are struggling as well. My hope is that we don't get into knee-jerk reactions uh, or emotional responses rather than truly moral and valued responses that, that promote the common good. As far as the parish is concerned, um, this week we'll be meeting uh, with uh, people from Human Resources to talk to the staff about what the procedures will be as we go through my church for the unification of our parish with St. Constance. Uh, and then next week we'll be meeting with our facilitator to begin the process of discussing how that merger would look like, what that will look like in terms of uh, how we play out in the future. Combining the two parishes is never easy. There's a lot of details, um, and certainly those are important to work out properly. But more importantly is how are we going to bring our two parishes together to form one community of faith. Uh, we have a lot in common with the people of St. Constance Parish. They're our next-door neighbors, but they're also have a large Polish community which is different from ours and how do we blend these two together uh, without making it two separate parishes with two worship sites. That's going to be difficult and will require all of us, I think, to, to pray about it and work together to go outside our comfort zones to bring the two communities together because we're still all God's children and we've been you know, tasked by the Cardinal to try to make that work as best we can. And so there's a lot of work to be done in the next six months for sure until the merger officially takes place on July 1st, but also beyond that in terms of evangelization of ourselves and our neighbors and our families to bring us together and bring us back to the core of Jesus. We certainly have a lot to do as a culture, as a city, as a society, as a nation to bring peace and harmony back into the discourse as well. Um, so please pray for all of that for our first responders particularly, and for our uh, elected officials, that they can serve with justice and peace and work for the common good. It's sorely lacking right now in virtually all levels of government. 
And so we, uh, we're in a difficult time and certainly pray for each other because with the pandemic restrictions, uh, more and more people are, are losing jobs, businesses are closing, and um, that makes the burden on, on their families emotionally, physically, and mentally very, very difficult. And of course, that uh, also strains the um, system, that, uh, the safety nets of food, to, food safety and security and housing and all those other things. Uh, medical care that's very very difficult right now and so with all the problems that we face it's easy to be discouraged and my um, suggestion and my prayer has been to look to the cross to look to Jesus and to know that things are often dark and the old expression that darkest before the dawn is to persevere in the difficulty and be witnesses to Christ in the midst of difficulty in the midst of challenges uh, we've had a lot of more funerals recently and that certainly hits me home as well because my own recent losses and so it's very hard as we watch people suffering through all of this and you know I was just recently with a family and you know the funeral home is not even open for services so it, it's very difficult they're there for the family but they can't even have a uh, wake service and have people gather around and so uh, that's very difficult and challenging for people at this time so how do we be people of compassion and use our own troubles our own difficulties our own losses to become more compassionate people, to bring that light of Christ to others by our witness. Difficult, and it's not easy. It's certainly not easy for me, and that's my profession, uh, and it's not easy for any of us, but we are all professional Christians by baptism, and that's what we're called to try to do. So please continue to keep all of us, one another, in prayer and to do the best we can to restore the common good and to lay aside differences that divide us not to compromise principles or values, but certainly not to compromise the common good or, or the values of our culture and our, and our nation as well and our faith. So God bless you all, and I hope to see you this weekend, if uh, not in person at church, uh, certainly then virtually. This is the last week of the Christmas season. I know it doesn't feel like Christmas for most everybody, and the culture doesn't look like that, but Christmas season does last through this Sunday with Feast of the Baptism of the Lord, which is a very important feast because it reminds us that God joined our human families to tell us that we're sacred. And by, bapti by being baptized himself, who was certainly sinless and without sin and without needing to be baptized, what he did is he sanctified the waters and sanctified baptism as our way as human beings to join God's divine family. And so the baptism that we all share is a celebration of what we call divinization in Christ. And the hard part, of course, is how do we recognize it in ourselves and live up to it as best we can in our limited fashion as human beings. But that's why Christmas lasts three weeks and why it's so important to remember this feast of the baptism of the Lord that truly is our call to be one with Christ in this life and obviously then in the next. God bless you all and have a wonderful, wonderful week.